students today we read the poem o to the butterfly understanding the poem is a hard nut to crack for some students so we provide you simple english explanation after every stanza i have also provided simple hindi explanation of whole poem in last of the video आपको इस वीडियो में हर स्टेंजा के बाद आपको सिंपल इंग्लिश में एक्सप्लेनेशन मिलेगा वीडियो के अंत में पूरे पोयम को आपकी सुविधा के लिए हिंदी में समझाया गया है लेट्स एंजॉय द पोयम मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल रीड द पोयम ओ टू द बटरफ्लाई देर आर टू वर्ड्स इन द स्टेंजा विच आर नोट यूज इन मॉडर्न इंग्लिश first is thou it means you another one is thy which means your in this poem the poet addresses the butterfly thou spark of life that weighs wings of gold thou songless wonder mid the songful birds with nature secrets in thy tints unrolled through gorgeous cipher past the reach of words yet dear to every child in glad persuaded beguiled living his unspoiled days mid flowers and flocks and herds in this stanza the poet says the butterfly is part of life she waves her wings she wanders without singing among birds she has hidden the secrets of nature in her unrolled sets of colors she has a nice secret code of nature which cannot be told in words she is dear to the children they run after her to catch her as they are attracted she spends her days sucking nectar <coughs> of flowers and flying over flocks thou wing blossom liberated thing what secret tie binds thee to other flowers still held within the garden's four string will they to show with the completed us take flight and be like they irrevocably free hovering at will or they are parental bowers in second stanza poet says that the butterfly has wings she is confident and free poet asks what the relationship between her and the flowers he asked if the flowers will also fly in the air when their time will come will they also be permanently free to fly over the garden or aid thy luster drawn from heavenly hood a sumptuous drifting fragment of the sky caught when the sunset its last glance imbues with stern splendor and the tree tops high grass that sweet blazonry then land those tents to the on the to float a few short hours and die In next stanza the poet asks if the signing of wings of the butterfly is because of the heavenly colors its signing is like the small pieces of the sky moving in the air slowly it seems as if the wings got the signing from the rays of the sun its last rays fell on the top of the trees which the trees seem to give on to its wings to last for short while and then vanish birds have their necks they rear their eggs young 
and flit on errands all the live long day each fields mouse keeps the homestead whence it sprung but thou art nature's free man free to stray unfettered through the wood seeking thine airy food the sweetness spiced on every blossom spray in this stanza poet says the birds have their nest to live they look after their young ones the field mice have their own houses in the field but you are free in the nature you excitedly fly here and there to find your feet that is the sweetness of healthy nectar garden one wide bank is spreads for thee o dantes reveler of the joys earth one drop of honey gives thy taste a second drop would drug the past all mirth Thy feast no ours resource. Thy calm eyes never close. Thou sobrest pride to which the sun gives birth. The garden of first butterfly a me. Only a single drop of honey satiates her hunger, and if another given, she will fall asleep. She does not enjoy her party in a wild, wild manner. Her eyes are calm, and she is small fairy, which wakes up when the sun rises. Yet the soul of man upon thy wings for ever soars in aspiration. Thou, his emblem of the new career that springs when death arrests. Bids all his prey to go. He seeks his hope in the of immortality, symbol of life. Me with such faith and do. In the last stanza, the man sees the wings of butterfly. He feels the brightness in the future. She represents a new life that will never end. Man finds hope in the signing of her wings. First stanza me poet butterfly ko spark of life kehta hai. Titli apne pankh fadfadati hai, wo bina gaaye idhar udhar ghoomti rehti hai. Wo pakshiyon ki tarah gaa nahi sakti. Titli se poet batata hai ki tum prakriti ka rahasya ho. Bacche ise pasand karte hain aur ye pura din phoolon ka ras चूसते हुए घूमती है सेकेंड स्टेंजा में पोइट बताता है कि तितली के पंख हैं और वो आजाद घूमती है पोइट जो है वो बटरफ्लाई से पूछता है कि फूलों के साथ तुम्हारा रिलेशन क्या है पोइट बताता है कि क्या कभी फूल भी तितली की तरह कभी उड़ेंगे थर्ड स्टेंजा में पोइट बताता है कि तितली के रंग स्वर्ग से उतरे हैं ऐसा लगता है कि तितली ने सूरज की डूबती किरणों से रंग लिए हैं जो कुछ देर पेड़ों पर पड़ती हैं और खत्म हो जाती हैं फोर स्टेंजा में पोइट कहता है कि सभी पक्षी और चूहे तक ने अपने घर बना रखे हैं पर तितली आजाद घूमती है वो इधर उधर उड़कर फूलों का रस चूसती है फिफ्थ स्टेंजा में पोइट बताता है कि तितली बगीचे में अपना भोजन पाती है शायद कि एक छोटी सी बूंद उसके लिए काफ़ी है दूसरी बूंद लेते ही वह सो जाएगी वह बड़ी शांत है और सूरज की किरणों के साथ सुबह उठती है लास्ट स्टेंजा में पोइट कहता है कि तितली के पंखों को देखकर आदमी खुश और भविष्य के प्रति आशावान हो जाता है तितली नए जीवन का प्रतीक है जो कभी खत्म नहीं होता है